Let's now do some international stories. It's been 24 years since the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsi. For some Rwandese, the event that claimed over one million lives is worth remembering because of the country's progress since the incident and also as a reminder of a dark history that must never recur. At an event organized by the Rwandan community in Ghana, some Rwandese students lit 24 candles to represent the number of years since the genocide and delivered 24 messages of hope of a bright future. While delivering their messages, they mentioned the names of 100 victims. Though 24 years have elapsed, their tears were visible. I've been joined by one of those students via Skype, Deje Sylvain Ifashaboyo, and he's a Ghanaian student, a Rwandan student, I beg your pardon, living in Ghana. Hello, Deje, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. It's great to have you here. Now, while you were delivering your message of hope at that uh, commemorative event, I could see tears in your eyes. How did the genocide impact your life? Oh, well, I was born uh, right in the middle of the genocide. And by that time, my father was already killed. Some of the aunties and uncles were already killed as well. So when I was reading the names, I was actually getting touched to the people that I never got a chance to meet. So that's why you saw some tears coming down. So it was to think of a father you never got a chance to see. Deja, just help us understand how your mother survived the genocide. Well, uh, my mother was went in the bush and she was actually pregnant of me. And then when she gave birth, the other PF soldiers, the soldiers who liberated the country, led by Paul Kagame, who is now the president. So they rescued my mother and myself, plus some few other siblings. But then my dad was already gone. Now, now there's been, you know, some reactions to the celebration of the genocide. Some believe this is not a history worth celebrating. Do you agree with them? No, I don't. Tell us why. The reason why I don't agree with those who think that Rwanda should not commemorate uh, the people is because the history of Rwanda has to be taught all over the world. Because genocide is real, right? And once we don't commemorate, once we don't teach the history, the history may repeat itself. So we do it in a way to honor our own people. We do it in order to teach the Africa and the whole world what happened and how we actually overcome that. Because if you saw well, you realize that we projected the past and death of us. Dejoy, I'll have you hold on a minute. Um, Director of Academic Affairs at the Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Dr. Vladimir Intudans, who believes there's a lot Ghana can learn from the Rwandan genocide. We need to understand that when conflict starts, everybody is a mad person and especially conflict that is based not on facts, but fiction. It has no end. The Rwandan genocide came as a result of unwritten and retold kind of history. And for Ghana, it's very important because we have a similar thing where tribes have unwritten history and communal miscommunication create condition for conflict. And we must learn from Rwanda. That stories about Tutsis made it possible for the Hutus to hate them, and the colonial master exploited that, created condition for generations upon generations to hang on to this figment of imagination. And then there was this genocide. Again, for Ghana, I think we need to learn from the Rwandese as to how they tried to build bridges among and or between communities that historically have been made to hate each other. 
take that one for example, it's so internecine, I mean, intractable. But how can we cross that bridge to make these communities understand each other? Rwanda has done it. Then beyond that, we must also learn from the how rapidly they make people forget their past. That the newer generation does not remember their past at all. If they remember at all, it's one of those things. We call it conflict transformation. And what Kagame has done is to transform the society so that people don't even think about going into conflict anymore. Because the things that bring conflict have been eliminated through development and the processes of looking at institutions and the constitution as the biggest arbiters for any misunderstanding. So people are now Rwandese, not their relationships are not determined by who they are, where they belong, but determined by society. Rwanda genocide, at the heat of it or at the trigger of it, was more of the media. When people were being referred to as cockroaches, that they had no right of existence, exterminate them. And Akayesu and others took this and they were making that propaganda against the Tutis, it holds. The media is a very powerful tool for positive thinking and negative action. The First World War, the Second World War, and many other wars have been fought because of the media. And we must learn from Rwanda that that radio station, the evil station, created condition for Tutis to be hated. For Ghana, those of you who read me and I write a lot in the Times, every Friday I'm there, I was warning and warning until uh, the Muntia 3 case came. There was a time I gave um, a paper, Clubhouse, talking about how dangerous the media is where conflict is concerned. And I gave several examples throughout the world with slides that show these. The Ghanaian media, at times they tell us, but well, we media, everything is news. No, sorry. If you use your anchor, to let people propagate hatred against one another. Remember, you are part of it. If you use your anchor to accept false news, hate news, I mean, negative news, and more so when you have a gullible audience, and that's what happened in Rwanda. The gullibility of the ordinary citizen is a dangerous factor to incite people to war. And we have it in Ghana. The people are so gullible. Everything you tell them, they take. It is the reason why fake pastors and their preachings are festering seriously in Ghana. So it is that the media, the media should know that they could for, foment trouble for Ghana. But incidentally, nowhere has the media been able to stop trouble. Nowhere. As for fomenting the trouble, it's easy. But taking it back is very difficult. Dr. Vladimir Intridansa, then let me come back to you, Dejeur. So tell me what growing up in Rwanda has been like after the genocide with regards to what the country has tried to do to prevent a recurrence of the genocide. Well, thank you. Uh, I think one of the reasons uh, when we were growing up 1996, 97, our society was completely broken. You could walk on the way, you see the bodies of people, went to school was hard, but then the government came in and started teaching people that they need to look beyond ethnics. They need to look beyond the reality, actually see the hope. So in that sense, we were more drawn into unity, kind of reconciliation, some of the young people, like genocide survivors, were paid by the government to go to school to learn, to access education. And when we reached in schools, some of the genocide survivors, they created uh, like association so that those who lost their families can actually find families at school that they share the same story. And step by step, we actually made a progress. So currently, I don't feel much pain when I think about the past. I rather feel... Uh, hope. I rather feel that what happened, I need to be the, the main agent to fight that it will never happen again. Not just in Rwanda, but everywhere I will find myself. 
Deja, finally, uh, I met you and a couple of your friends at that event, and it was interesting to note that you don't identify as Tutsi or Hutus. You are all Rwandese. How did that happen in terms of socialization? How were you made to understand to see everyone as you know, a Rwandese and not by tribe? Well, I think everything is about leadership, right? And the leadership pre uh, before genocide taught people that they are different, right? They humanized some people and made other people human beings. But the leadership after genocide like brought the common, the oneness of Rwanda and Rwandans. They told us that the only way we need to live is actually to see ourselves as Rwandans, not Hutu, not Tutsi, not Twa. They taught our parents that they, if they need the right generation, they have to teach them to be Rwandans, not to be Hutu, not to be Tutsi, not to be Twa. So that means our parents stopped telling us such a thing as Hutu, Twa, or Tutsi. They started teaching us about Rwanda, about compassion, about generosity, about patriotism. So that's how we came to overcome such a thing. Honestly, uh, I think I can share with you that I know a friend who married a family that killed his parents. Yes. That is That's how we are now. That's how we think now. That's why I can't look at my colleague and be like, you are what you are. I can't even tell because the Rwandan picture is what comes into my mind and into my eyesight. Thank you so much for, sh for sharing your story with us, uh, Deje Sylvain Ishabayo. He is a survivor of the Rwandan genocide, actually was born in the midst of all that chaos and lost his father as a result. But here he is uh, sharing a story of a new Rwanda and he actually believes uh, that this genocide should not occur uh, again in Rwanda and other parts of Africa. Really appreciate your time, uh, Deje. Enjoy the rest of your day.